Hey guys, welcome to today's episode of The Drawing Board. My name is David Franklin. I'm your host and thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm sorry it's been a long time since my last video and somewhere between not having the time and it being too hot outside, I wasn't able to make videos, but we're gonna go ahead and jump right in today and talk about something new. I was going to talk about vegetarianism, but we didn't get there because a big product has hit the market and people are ranting and raving about it. It's Pokemon Go. And whether or not you like Pokemon Go, there are a lot of great things about Pokemon Go. It encourages you to go out and exercise. This is what people claim, that it's, that it's making people go out and exercise, making people to go out and socialize. Social anxiety and depression are melting away for thousands of users, maybe millions of users. So for those of you who are fans and are trying to explain to people why Pokemon Go is so great, or if you are a Pokemon Go hater, and just wondering what all the fuss is about, this video is for you. We're gonna talk about more of a scientific perspective of why Pokemon Go is so great. And before we get into that, I'd like to say a little bit of a disclaimer. I've barely played Pokemon Go. I played for about 20 minutes one day just to know what it's all about, but it is a video game and there's a lot of scientific perspectives that I can take on this, so I'm gonna go ahead and launch right in. Let's start with physical exercise. Physical exercise is something, it's a big complaint about modern people and millennials specifically that we don't engage in enough of it. We aren't taking the time out to go and exercise or walk around and that's bad for our health, that's bad for our psychological well-being. We need to get out more. But unfortunately, we have this pain system registered in our brain. And what the pain system does is it likes to tell you to stop working so hard. It basically, it's a survival mechanism. So if you're working too hard, you can tear muscles, you can break bones, and that's gonna keep you from being fit to survive. So your body tries to tell you when you're pushing yourself too hard. Of course, some people have learned to push through this, but that's not the point right now. The point is this pain system is telling you to stop so that you remain healthy and you can survive. So if you're trying to pick up a 500 pound car, you're not going to be able to. There's no reason to pick up, a, or I guess it's probably a thousand pounds, but if you're picking up the back end alone, you're not lifting the whole thing, it's a 500 pound lift. There's not a big enough reason for you to lift that. You're going to feel the pain and stop trying. However, if your child is underneath the car, first of all, adrenaline is an amazing thing and it's not quite a, a, a fair comparison, but all of a sudden your body can lift it because there's a good enough reason for you to lift that car. But we don't have that sort of motivation every single day. We don't. Um, but we used to. Thousands and thousands of years ago, when we were doing the hunting and gathering thing, we had a direct reward-based system for going and getting food. If you were a gatherer, you walked around for miles upon miles picking berries and stuff, berries and nuts off of, off of plants and bushes, and then you climbed up trees to get, let's say, bananas in, in a tree or coconuts or something like that. You climbed and you walked, and if you're a hunter, you tracked something for miles upon miles and then killed it. And if it was a big thing, like a Macedon, you worked really, really hard and put yourself in a lot of danger, but at the end of the day, you got to eat. I don't know if you've noticed, but eating is freaking amazing. Like, you get so many positive chemicals, your brain feels so good, you feel satisfied, and that's a direct reward for having done all that exercise. And every single day, you're gonna go out and get more food, and every single day, you're going to eat more food, and it's going to reward you for exercising, and you're gonna keep doing it. But we haven't been hunters and gatherers for a long time, so there has been a certain level of stoicism of, um, a focus that we've had to put in once we moved to agriculture. Once agriculture happened, what is going on with my hair back here? Once agriculture <laughs> happened, we had to say, okay, if I don't go out and plow today, if I don't go and tend to the fields, we're all gonna starve. And starving is not a good thing. And then at the end of the season, you're going to get a massive reward and a bountiful harvest, and you're gonna keep plowing the fields and tending the fields. So again, you're having that direct reward system. but. In today's world, we're not doing any of that at all. Your job is probably, unless you're a professional athlete, your job is probably staying at a desk or it is um, customer service. And you might walk around a little bit, you might be standing on your feet for most of the day, but it's not the same thing as a 12 mile hike and then killing a mastodon or plowing the fields. You're not working that hard. You're not exhausting your muscles. 
And so we've invented the gym. You go to the gym to run in place on a treadmill or lift weights, but there's absolutely no motivation to do it unless you're talking about the dopamine hit, which it takes a while to become accustomed to that and honestly become a, uh, a junkie of that drug from working out because you can get it other places. Um, but also, let's say the sexual appeal or the health that you are thinking, man, I really want to have this body uh, and this health level in three months and I'm going to stick with it. And that's really hard for a lot of people to do because that pain is such a dismotivator uh, that you don't want to do it. You don't want to go out. You want to stay home and watch Netflix, and that's what happens. That's a big complaint about our, uh, this generation, about millennials, that we don't go out and do that. But you see, what Pokemon Go does is it's not feeding you, even though some restaurants and stuff will give you discounts for being a Pokemon Go player, which that's, that's a great reward right there. It's very traditional. Um, but on top of that, you're getting a direct reward. You're getting a dopamine hit every single time you catch a Pokemon, and you have to walk around to catch a Pokemon. You're gonna have to walk around to hatch your little eggs so that you get new Pokemon. And that's gonna require exercise. So you're getting a direct reward right after exercising. Plus you have the distraction of instead of one rep, two rep, three rep, thinking about all of your exercises and focusing, making sure that you're doing the repetitions. Instead, you're thinking of, man, I gotta go get that Charizard over there. Man, I gotta get that Bulbasaur over there. And you're going to think about something else rather than the exercise, which is really, really good. You don't really think about exercising when a Mastodon is fighting back. That's not what you're thinking about. You're, you're thinking about a goal. And that goal is going to be very, very important. So you're gonna disregard the pain and keep pushing through, which Pokemon Go not only makes you think about something else, but it gives you a direct reward for it every time you do something. And this is something that video games are very, very good at doing. They give you little dopamine hits every single time you do a little bit better. Think about when you're playing, uh, what was it, Flappy Bird was really popular a couple years ago. Flap, 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 flap. You're making it maybe three gates, three gates further than last time, but you're so excited and you get a reward that's very akin to actually having sex or eating food when you beat this game. A dopamine hit comes, it's your happiness chemical. So you're so, so happy that you've been the successful. So you keep doing it. And Pokemon Go does the exact same thing. It rewards you every single time you catch a Pokemon. And in this case, every single time you're walking around, you are rewarded. Of course, it also is helping people with social anxiety. Now, I have a couple friends who are very, very introverted, or so they say. They have social anxiety, but as soon as you talk about something that they want to talk about, whether it's Magic the Gathering for one of my friends, uh, another friend is really into MMO or um, D&D, and then I have another friend who's really, really into the Elder Scrolls or rock and roll, particularly Guns N' Roses, and if you mention that around them, they light up. They, they, they will beeline across the room to talk to you in, in, in a way where they were, were scared to even leave the side of the wall at the party. They just wanted to talk to you about that because all of a sudden they have a reason to talk to you. They're not thinking about how awkward it is because there's nothing to be awkward about. You two share a common interest and all of a sudden you can talk. And so for some of us who are good at Small talk, that's, that's an easy thing, but for some people it's not quite as much and that could be a root cause of social anxiety is not having a reason to overcome that awkwardness. But with Pokemon Go, uh, when you're out and about, you run into people who are like, hey, did you see that Pokemon over here? And everyone's talking to each other. You have a common interest, and that's helping break down walls. People are reporting lower levels of depression, lower levels of social anxiety. They're reporting that they feel better because they've been exercising all the time, and they're rewarded for it constantly. So if you think it's juvenile, go for it. I'm just here to explain why people like it so much, but also why it's kind of a good thing, why it's more traditional actually to like Pokemon Go, why it's helping people get a very instantaneous based reward system for not just playing a video game sitting at home, but going out and socializing and exercising. It, it's actually quite natural from a psychological perspective to have these instantaneous rewards. So, Rant over. <laughs> if you like Pokemon Go, good for you. I'm so happy that you found something that's letting you go out and exercise and hang out with people. And if you don't like Pokemon Go, pick your battles. If you want people to be healthy and socialize, in a modern age, this is how you do it, right? You made a product that has helped people go out and do that. And so if you think that video games are the greater evil than uh, obesity 
and and antisocial personalities, then that's your call. But for me, I, I, I think video games, as long as they're used properly, are a great training tool and a great way to blow off steam. So again, I don't interact with them all that much, but they're, they're, they're great for some people, and I actually like what Pokemon Go is doing. So you go, guys. So thanks again for watching today's episode of The Drawing Board. My name's David Franklin. I'm your host, and check back in with us next week where we're going to be talking about more semi-controversial topics, and we're going to be talking about what I should have been talking about this week, vegetarianism, and whether or not you should eat meat. See, we've got these little canine teeth here. Should we use them, or are we in a more civilized age where we don't need to get our calories from meat? I don't know. Tune in next week, and we'll talk about that. See you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in.